So in writing High Hitler, I was trying to make sense of the dramatic changes that have taken place in the depiction of the Third Reich since the turn of the millennium in contemporary culture. These changes have been visible um, in many areas of contemporary cultural life, but especially on the internet, where the so-called Hitler meme has been incredibly visible on a variety of websites. One could look, for example, at cats that look like Hitler or online games such as Six Degrees of Hitler or the countless YouTube parodies of Hitler from the recent film Downfall to see these changes at work. However, it's also the case that one can see how these changes are visible in highbrow contemporary intellectual life. So ongoing debates about whether World War II was the good war, whether the Holocaust is unique, these are the more intellectual versions of the popular cultural uh, examples of trivialization and normalization that I've been analyzing. The Nazi era has always oscillated between the poles of morality on the one hand and normality on the other. For many decades after World War II, many people insisted on the necessity of remembering the Nazi past from a moralistic perspective, but there have also been competing attempts to normalize the past. And I argue in the book that since the turn of the millennium, these efforts have intensified quite dramatically as a result of various factors. These factors include political uh, trends such as the war on terror, as it's called, since 9-11 the ongoing information revolution, and the simple passage of time, which has led to the decline of uh, witnesses to the Nazi period and the rise of a new generation of younger people who have no personal connections to the past. One of the more notable novels that appeared last year was published by Timur Vermesh in German called Er ist wieder da, or as it's been translated into English, Look Who's Back. It portrays Adolf Hitler coming back to life unaccountably in contemporary Berlin and, even more bizarrely, becoming a successful talk show host. The joke of the novel's plot is that the German people end up celebrating Hitler and turn him into a celebrity because they think he's a method actor who doesn't want to break character and ultimately is a Hitler impersonator. The point of the novel, in large part, is to criticize the normalization of the Nazi past by showing how Hitler can become uh, subjected to celebrity forces in the present day age. At the same time, however, he ends up turning, the novel ends up turning Hitler into the butt of a joke and an occasion for laughter, and that, I argue, also contributes to the larger process of normalization. Another very interesting text that uh, is worth thinking about is Michael Chabon's best-selling novel from 2006, The Yiddish Policeman's Union. It explores the fantasy of what would have happened had the Jews of Europe been able to escape during the Holocaust and find refuge in the state of Alaska, which, according to FDR, would have been able to be turned into a Jewish state. The interesting thing about this novel is that the fantasy very quickly turns into a nightmare because as a result of the Jews leaving Europe and arriving in Alaska, the uh, existing Jewish uh, settlement or the Yeshuv in Palestine ends up being overrun by Arab invaders. The Jews are quote unquote driven into the sea and there is a catastrophe for the Jews in Palestine. The fantasy, in other words, becomes turned into a nightmare and as the Middle East begins to implode, Michael Shabon points out that sometimes it's dangerous to wish for certain fantasies that don't end up turning out the way you would expect. Finally, Quentin Tarantino's film Inglorious Bastards, which had numerous Oscar nominations several years ago, is also worth commenting upon. This is a film that also plays with a very notable fantasy, the fantasy of killing off Hitler. And indeed, in this counterfactual scenario in the film, Hitler does die along with Joseph Goebbels in a hail of bullets. The price that is exacted for this, however, is quite steep. The Jewish assassins, led by Brad Pitt and a bunch of other American quote-unquote bastards, end up having to use sadistic Nazi methods in order to get their revenge, and Tarantino, in a sense, blurs the identity between perpetrators and victims and shows the Jews behaving like Nazis. And whether that's a price worth paying in the film, cinematically speaking, is open, of course, to debate and caused a lot of controversy. Most of the post-war period, I argue in the book, the Nazi past has been subjected to a dialectic of normalization, which is to say there have been countless efforts by proponents of normalization to make the, the Nazi past a past like any other. And in the process, they've inevitably generated a backlash. In fact, they've dialectically elicited a backlash from the defenders of viewing the Nazi past from a more moralistic, exceptional perspective. These two poles have been uh, at war with one another uh, for the entirety of the post-war period, and this ongoing of tug of war I argue is probably going to intensify as the eyewitnesses to the Nazi period fade into the past and as younger generations of people with no personal relationship to it become increasingly um, 
comfortable with more casual representations of it. Whether or not one of the two camps will win out in the end is impossible to say, but the track record thus far seems to suggest that the tug of war between morality and normality will continue into the future and, if anything, intensify.